Medical liability is a fascinating topic to me because it represents one of the areas where our legal system is trying to make the world safer and better for people, and I think failing. We rely heavily on tort liability to give doctors and hospitals the incentives they need to render high quality health care. But from what my research has been able to show, it does just the opposite most of the time. And so I'm really intrigued by the idea of using data to figure out how to do things better, how to make the law a smarter tool for health improvement. What we've been able to do is use data from malpractice insurers, from hospital records, and other sources to understand how big the problem of medical negligence is, what some of the root causes are of medical errors, what some of the barriers are to improving things within hospitals just on their own, and finally, how the law is and is not helping the problem. One of the things I've been focusing on over the last few years, along with many others from medicine and law, is trying to implement a new approach, a new pathway to resolving instances where patients are hurt by the care they receive. It's known as communication and resolution programs, and it actually was pioneered here at Stanford, among a few other academic medical centers and the Veterans Affairs Healthcare System. And the approach is simple. When you admit, when, admit error and offer a profound apology and make it right to patients, they don't don't feel the need to sue. So we've been trying to get hospitals and healthcare facilities around the country to implement this approach, and we've been evaluating their progress in doing so and the outcomes. And the results are really encouraging. Although not every patient is deterred from suing when they receive an apology and fair compensation up front, many are. And at the root of that is that many lawsuits result from misunderstandings between doctors and patients about whether a bad outcome of medical care was due to negligence or was unavoidable. So we found, for example, that about three quarters of the cases that are handled by these programs, the problem is not that there was negligence, but that there was a terrible outcome. The family had a lot of needs in the aftermath of that outcome, sometimes for money, but often for things like an explanation, an acceptance of responsibility, empathy, uh, having their concerns heard, being connected with social services. These are all things that hospitals can do for patients that help make them whole and that avoid tort litigation. So if we want the quality of care to be optimal, we have to create a space in which healthcare providers are really accountable for the care that they render and for problems in that care, but not in a way that chills the very efforts to disclose errors, to discuss them, to learn from them and make things better that we want to encourage. And we're not there. So patients should care because it affects the quality of care they receive. Patients should also care because it affects the cost of care that they receive. And this was a big focus during federal health care reform, that so-called defensive medicine is driving up national health care costs. Some of those claims are overblown, but there is a kernel of truth to it. It does cost us money when physicians overprescribe. And moreover, it threatens everybody's health when, when patients are subjected to things that they don't need to be subjected to in order to calm someone's liability fear. So I think the promise of this empirical legal studies field, and empirical health law in particular, is that instead of guessing or speculating about how the law might be affecting health care or patients, we can learn how it is affecting things on the ground using data. And then the next question is, how do we bring those learnings to policymakers? This is an incredibly contested political space where we have interest groups on both sides asserting their versions of the truth, and that's a classic lawyer's approach. It has its place. That place is in the courtroom, not in the legislature. So our goal uh, is to bring evidence to policymakers about how things are really working, bring it in a way that's credible and understandable to the policymakers who are asked to make decisions about who should be able to sue, what should they be able to recover, and what are the alternative approaches that we might be taking to improve health care outside of the courtroom. <laughs>